as a kid, it's just like, wait, who are these people? Who's Laser Eye Guy and, and Russian Metal Man? And, and these are my nicknames for him. And Claw Dude. Hi, I'm Todd Nock, and today I'll be drawing an X-Men piece for Marvel's 80th anniversary. Now, I've been drawing all my life. Earliest memories are of drawing, like age three, scribbling in a circle. That quickly led into drawing my favorite cartoon characters. And one of my favorite cartoons, especially in the early 80s, was Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. That cartoon introduced me to the X-Men. And those characters, the look and the design, I wanna learn more about these X-Men, so I knew I had to go to the comic books. And I was immediately hooked. A buddy of mine in high school said, you know, Todd, you're always reading comics and you're always drawing. Have you ever tried making your own comic books? So that day when I got home from school, I took some printer paper, folded a few sheets in half and wrote and drew an eight page story. And it was terrible. The art was bad, the story went nowhere, but it was so much fun creating. I knew that night, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I would just spend my time reading my favorite comics, studying my favorite artists, and mimicking what I saw them do. There was an editor at Marvel named Renee Witterstatter. I would see her every convention, so she saw my work grow and develop to a point where I think I just wore her down. She's like, okay, I'll buy a one-page gag off of you for what the... So I came up with different Marvel Universe, you know, jokes. A few weeks later, she calls me up and says, I like these two X-Men ones, and it ran as the back cover for issue 21, and I was still in art school at the time. I was 21 years old, and my first paid published work was for Marvel and was drawing the X-Men. For the cover, I chose right smack dab in the middle of the 80s, 1985 era X-Men, really around the time that I came into reading the X-Men. I like to just create some basic shapes that convey the pose of the character, where are the bad guys, where is each hero. I'll start penciling and I like to work from the foreground and work my way to the background. Still working on different layers. If I notice something that needs to be moved or readjusted, it's easier to reposition them without having to worry about messing up other lines from other characters that are on the page. I definitely will go into an ink stage and, and bring in those black lines, nice, crisp, clean lines. And then it's fun just tapping into the kind of the classic 80s color, but then bring it to a more modern day tricks that we can do with digital. Light up storms, lightning bolts, or do some tricks with uh, Kitty's phasing. One of the things that was a must for me, and especially if I get to do a, an 80s era type cover, was a corner box. I love corner box art. It was something that really struck me as a kid. Seeing all the X-Men, you know, seeing the roster there, being able to do my uh, recreation of a corner box here uh, was definitely a lot of fun. Gosh, with this piece, there are so many favorite elements because this taps into so much of what I loved as a kid and still love here today as, as an adult, is each character holds a special connection for me. As an awkward kid in the 1980s, struggling with being bullied, I'd read X-Men and they're called muties and freaks and gene jokes. And it's like, they're being called names too, but this is how they're dealing with it. You know, they, they had a, a family friendship sort of connection there that they were kind of my comic book friends. There were people I could come home to after a rough day at school and I could crack open an issue and, and hang out with, you know, Nightcrawler and Kitty Pride or the New Mutants, which were the teenage team at the time and who I could really relate to. I, I felt awkward like Cannonball. I felt shy like Cypher. I felt like I looked weird like Nightcrawler, you know. These characters are so real and, and struggle with such real problems. I can relate to that. And to work here with Marvel here now for well over 10 years. It's a dream come true. The kid in me that still lives inside here definitely gets to come to work and have fun every day, getting to continue to chronicle the, the history and the stories of characters that I experienced, that have meant a lot to me, and continue to mean so much to me. I get to be that guy for another generation of Marvel readers. Commercial art, graphic design, art director in that regard, not something I want to do. Have fun, friends. I'm going to continue going towards comics. I want to be a storyteller.